In this video, we focus on what's called implicit differentiation. So far, we've always worked with true functions, functions of x, uh, functions where there's only one output value uh, for every input value to the function. Sometimes we're interested in instantaneous rates of change for implicit functions, things like uh, circles or curves which actually cross over, uh, things like these kinds of functions, particularly when we're talking about paths of objects. Now these can't be expressed as true mathematical functions. We can only write them as implicit relations. Uh, but we still want to find out about how they change with respect to their variables, and that means we need to be able to differentiate them. And that's where implicit differentiation comes in. Essentially, this is the process. Given that we have an implicit relationship between variables y and x, we can still find the derivative of y with respect to x using these three steps. Basically, we differentiate each part of the equation, both sides of the equation, with respect to x. Now, if there's nothing to do with y in there, that's perfectly fine. We just use our usual old rules. Whenever there is a y, though, looking at step two, we just replace that with y dashed, or dy dx, if you like. Finally, we try to rearrange the equation and solve the result for dy dx. Now, that dy dx will probably still have y's and x's in it and itself be an implicit relation, but that's perfectly fine. And we can use that to talk about the rate of change of our implicit relationship with respect to its variable. In this example, we're just going to focus purely on the mechanics of the process of implicit differentiation. We're given here a relationship y squared minus 5 equal to minus 2x squared. Now we can't rearrange that and solve for y as a single function of x. We could rearrange and get y equal to plus or minus something, but we don't really want that. That's actually giving us two functions. So what we're going to do is treat this as an implicit relation and differentiate it to find y dashed of x using the implicit differentiation method. Remember that step one said differentiate each part of the equation with respect to x. So what I'm going to do is write it like this. I'm going to say that I'm going to differentiate with respect to x, the left-hand side, y squared minus 5, and that'll be equal to differentiating the right-hand side with respect to x. I'm doing the same thing to both sides, so I'm not really changing anything, just the way things look. We're going to get the derivative with respect to x of y squared. Now remember, straight away, that's a y, and we need to go to step 2 here. Whenever it's necessary to differentiate y, just write y dashed. Well, we don't just have y, we've got y squared, so this is actually a chain rule. So we're going to go 2 times y to the 1 multiplied by the derivative of y, which is just dy dx. So it's the chain rule there. Then I've got to take away the derivative of 5 with respect to x, so that's minus 0. Over on the right-hand side, I've got the derivative of just a plain old constant multiple of a power of x, so that's going to be minus 2 by 2 is minus 4. x to the 2 minus 1 is just the 1. So I've got here 2y dy dx is equal to minus 4x. The last step on the previous slide said solve the result for y dashed. So I just need to rearrange for y dash or dy dx. And I should get dy dx is equal to minus 4x over 2y. And of course cancelling down, we just have minus 2x on y. It's self implicit relationship, but that's perfectly fine. It tells us the derivative of y with respect to x is minus 2x over y. And that's the mechanics of the idea. Remember that we just differentiate everything as usual, except when we see a y, in which case we need to replace all derivatives of y with dy dx or y dashed. Notice that that there is a y to the 1. We do use the chain rule. If there was a product, we'd use the product rule and so on. Let's have a look at another example. This time it's a little bit applied. We're talking about a particle which follows a trajectory which can be described by this equation, an implicit relationship between x and y. x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy is equal to 0. Again, an implicit relationship because we can't really rearrange it and get y equal to an explicit function of x alone. And the question asks us to find the slope of the tangent line to the path when x is equal to 2. Well, we know that the slope of the tangent line to a curve is just its derivative, so we need to find dy dx and evaluate it at x equals to 2. Let's just have a look at this one. Uh, we can actually look at the graph. I'm going to go to Wolfram Alpha and ask it to plot this, uh, this implicit relationship so that we can see what the path of this particle looks like. Okay, so over uh, on the web in Wolfram Alpha, you can see I've plugged in here 
the implicit relationship we're talking about, x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equal to 0. And Wolfram Alpha has given us a whole bunch of information. Importantly, what I'm interested in is this picture. The blue curve shows us what that implicit relationship looks like. And you can see now actually why it's not a function. You can see it would fail the vertical line test in any number of places here. We're interested in x equals 2. This function actually has one, two, uh, three values at x equals 2. So we're going to need to find a bunch of different values for this derivative, the slope of the tangent at that particular point. They're all going to be fairly different actually. So let's just jump back over to our example and see how this works. Let's start just by mechanically attacking this problem, differentiating both sides with respect to x. So we need the derivative with respect to x of x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equal to the derivative with respect to x of 0, which is of course just 0. So we've got the derivative of x cubed, that's just straight up 3x squared, because it's just x alone. With y cubed, we need to treat this as a chain rule, so I'm going to get 3y squared, and then multiplied by the derivative of y itself. And finally, we've got minus 9 by x times y, and that's minus 9 by the product of two functions of x, x and y. So the product rule tells me that's going to be y by the derivative of x, which is 1, plus x by the derivative of y, which we know is dy dx. And on the right-hand side, we've still got our 0. What we need to do now is solve this for dy dx. So we're going to rearrange and isolate dy dx. I'm going to have 3y squared dy dx left on the left and minus 9x dy dx on the left. And we're going to move the other bits over to the right. So we'll have minus 3x squared and plus 9y. Okay, so the next step will be to factor out that common factor of dy dx on the left we'll be left with 3y squared minus 9x multiplied by that, as you can see here. And the right-hand side stays the same. Finally, dy dx left alone when we divide through by 3y squared minus 9x. So we have 3x squared plus 9y over 3y squared minus 9x. Now, I'm pretty sure we can cancel some 3s here. On the top, we should have 3 outside of minus x squared plus 3y. And on the bottom, we'll have 3 outside of y squared minus 3x. Yeah, so we can definitely cancel some 3s there. And just to finish it off, we're going to get minus x squared plus 3y. And that's over y squared minus 3x. So that's our derivative for this implicit relationship back here at any x value. And indeed, for the corresponding y or y values, that will come from that x value. Now, back over in our Wolfram Alpha window, we know that we've actually got uh, one down here, another one here, and another one up here, different y values for the x value of x equals to 2. So we need to evaluate or figure out what those are uh, to figure out what the slope of the tangent line is to that curve. And that's a little bit beyond what we're doing here, so I'm actually just going to go straight in and ask Wolfram Alpha to tell me what those are. And when I substitute x equals to 2 into that relationship, Wolfram Alpha says y could be 4, minus 4.4, or 0 0.4 approximately. So those are approximate values. So we need this derivative evaluated for each of those options. In other words, dy dx when x equals 2 and y equals to 4. All we need to do is substitute those values into our dy dx representation here. All right, so when we do that, minus x squared is going to be minus the square of 2, which is minus 4, plus 3 by y is going to be plus 12, all divided by y squared, that's 16, take away 3 by 2 is 6. So we've got 8 divided by 10, or 4 and 5, or if you like, 0 0.8. So that's a positive, slight positive slope at x equals 2 and y equals 4. Jumping back over onto Wolfram Alpha at x equals 2, up at y equals 4, that's this point here, we can see the slope of the tangent, yeah, it would be positive there. So that sort of checks out okay. Okay, now for the other two possibilities, when y is minus 4.4, .4, uh, we get that this derivative is approximately minus 1.3, so a slight uh, negative gradient there for the slope, and if you can imagine down here, that is going to be a negative slope on that function down there as well. And finally, for the other 
I get that the derivative is approximately 0 0.5. And we can have a look at what that looks like back on the curve again. Right at that point there, slight positive slope, less than the slope up here. So that kind of makes out, it kind of checks uh, exactly what we expect. Okay, so that is uh, some implicit differentiation, uh, this time on an application of a particle's trajectory. And we found how that slope of the tangent can be uh, a little bit complicated because you get more values than you might expect in a normal function. Okay, so where to now? There are some exercises for this in the worksheets. Um, but for a challenge, maybe something you could do is try to show that the implicit derivative of any circle centered at the origin, regardless of the radius, show that the implicit derivative of that is the same thing. Have a look at that one if you're looking for something a little tougher.